In this video, I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this with a whole lot of this. Oh no, this, yeah, this is, this is a problem. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you wanna 3D print stuff, but don't wanna deal with all the hassle, they can 3D print it for you from PLA, PETG, ABS, nylon, aluminium, titanium, and way more. Or if you really wanna take your projects to the next level, they can even print and assemble custom PCBs. Go check them out in the link in the description and wish them a happy 10th anniversary. Okay, so I had some printer issues and yeah, like proper maker channels, they, they also have printer issues. But in their videos, it usually looks like this. All right, crew, so we left that print going overnight, but it only got this far. We're gonna have to investigate. Okay, looks like we had a bit of a clog in the heat break. Uh, clean that up, no problem. I did wanna upgrade this heat break anyway, so I just threw in one of the many expensive heat breaks I have lying around. Let's give this print another go. Okay, it's definitely the next day now, and uh, this has come out beautifully. It was definitely worth the 27 minutes that it took to fix and upgrade the hot end here. Time to move on to the incredibly complicated electronics. But I'm not a proper maker channel, so when I get printer issues, you're gonna get a whole video about it. So here's what happened. I was just beginning to get back into the swing of things, and in my very first print, my nozzle clogged. And that's not normally a big deal. I cleared the clog easily enough, but when I was putting everything back together, I just couldn't get it back into the uh, the heatsink here. I managed to get it in about this far and it got stuck and there was nothing I could do to get it in any further or to get it out. It, hot or cold, by the way, I ended up taking it outside, spraying in some WD-40 and using pliers to yank it out. Then I got it out and then instantly lost the heat break. I have, no, I have no idea where it went. So I'm gonna need a new one. At this point, I figured I had two options. I could roll the dice on another random bimetal heat break from AliExpress, or I could just replace the hot end altogether with a good quality micro Swiss one that I know is legit for five times the price. I went with the option that gave me an excuse to spend money. But before I installed the hot end, it looked like my extruder had been grinding away for some time on a piece of filament that wasn't going anywhere, and I was worried it might be broken, so I thought I'd give that a test first. And... Oh no... Uh oh... This... This is not a good thing. I think we're gonna have to pull the Sprite extruder apart and pretend like I might be able to fix it in some way, and then realize that I can't. So once it was all apart, I gave it another test and... Uh, is that just kind of working? I don't understand this. Then with absolutely no confidence, I put it all back together and cross my fingers. Hmm. But, okay, I've been editing this video and if we go right back to here before I pulled it apart, does it or does it not look like it's extruding? It does, right? Did I just think it wasn't because it wasn't going very fast? I don't know, what I do know is that this was all just a big waste of time. The first of many. Now if anyone thought for a second that I had any idea what I'm doing, this should dispel that notion. See, what happened was, when I installed the hot end, I put in the heat block upside down. So, obviously I uninstalled it, but for some reason I got it in my head that it was probably fine upside down and it might even be better with the wiring, so I reinstalled it upside down. Then I realized that the heater block wasn't exactly symmetrical, so maybe installing it upside down was a problem? I don't know, but I uninstalled it again. I even had to pull out the element and thermistor, which had taken like 40 minutes to get right the first time. But I got them back in and reinstalled everything the right way up. Finally. I literally wasted hours on this, but when it was finally installed and working, I found myself with another decision to make. I could continue the project that I was working on and get a good video out in a timely manner, or I could get sidetracked and waste more time on another pointless printer upgrade. 
Now I know that in my last video I said making this and making this video is so much more enjoyable than blabbing on about printer upgrades. So I really want to make more videos like this and but In my defense, I've had this box sitting around for a while with all the parts I need to do a hot end upgrade. I got a knock to a fan so that my printer can run quieter. I got a few of these buck converters so that I can use the 12 volt knock to a fan on the 24 volt circuit. I did have to go out and buy some extra long M3 bolts that could fit all the way through the knock to a fan to connect it to the hot end shroud. These ones are too long, but I can cut them down. I also got this big 5015 blower fan for part cooling because I want my printer to be loud. But apparently because it's so powerful, I can just run it at a lower speed and then it'll be quieter. And this is the shroud I printed out for them all to fit into. I think it's called the Compact Neo Solo. I'll put the Thingiverse link in the description. And finally, I got this DuPont wiring kit and connectors because I want to be able to connect and fully disconnect the entire hot end shroud, including the fans, when I'm working on my printer. So with all my parts ready, I set up my tiny little room so that I didn't have to keep working on the floor. And things went downhill from there. I spent 20 minutes trying to insert one heat set insert and cut some wires. Boom. I tried to do the DuPont connectors and uh, I, after doing some tests, it just, they didn't work. The, the wire I have and the crimper I have, the wire's just too small for the small setting on the crimper and yep. So I want to do it like a big boy and I want to solder these. So I'm just going to save us all some time and hassle here and just tell you that I didn't need to do the soldering. The DuPont connector worked just fine. I was doing it wrong. So here's some really sped up footage of a whole bunch of really bad soldering that I didn't need to do. And this whole thing has just been a big long ordeal, including the actual making the video part. So if you're enjoying this at all, please give it a like. It, it'll kind of make it almost oh, worth it. Temperature, fan speed, go on. <gasps> the fan is fanning. Woo. After I had the blower fan pointlessly soldered in, I decided to go outside and cut down the bolts that I had to the right size. That, again, turned out to be something I was very bad at. But after a few goes, I managed to get like one of them maybe close enough, so I called it good. Then I painted the black shroud black and came back inside to tackle the scary job of wiring in the buck converter and 12 volt fan. It's at this point that I realized two things. Firstly, that the DuPont connector worked just fine, I was doing it wrong. And secondly, this fan has these little gaps in here, so I don't need weirdly long bolts. I could just use the smaller ones I already had. More time wasted. But after that, things actually started going right. I managed to wire in the buck converter with a mix of ferrules and very average soldering. I used my multimeter for the first time and turned this little dial to bring 24 volts down to 12 oh, volts. Sure it's on 12. 12 volts. It's happened. It's happening. Okay. Uh, good. It was very satisfying. I felt like a real, you know, electronics person. And with that all done, I could go back up to the fans, snip the bad soldering I'd done and install them properly with DuPont connectors. And honestly, compared to everything else so far, it went pretty freaking well. All I had to do was put it all back together and it worked. I did a thing with electronics and it, and it did nothing, there was no smoke, nothing broke, it actually worked. I'm super happy with how well it turned out and that it actually functions. And after setting it all up and doing a whole bunch of calibration using Teaching Tech's GitHub page and Orca Slicer for the first time, I was actually able to like properly dial in my printer. I really haven't had it printing this well before. Was it worth it? For sure. Does it make a good video? Probably not. But now I can print parts that actually properly fit together and even have moving parts. So, um, I guess now I should actually go and attempt to make something. You know, 
Like the channel name. Swoosh.